I've got this blog post open here written by Max Wolf, and it is a really good read. It talks about text embeddings and how you can probably store them best in Parquet and in Polars. But the thing that's really interesting here is that it's not just taking any embeddings out there. No, it's taking embeddings for Magic the Gathering cards. My favorite point of the blog post is that it really reminds the user that if you want to do quick retrieval for embeddings, odds are you don't need an embedding database. You are probably going to be just fine if you use some simple NumPy functionality, especially if you have a data set that's tens of thousands of embeddings. You're really going to be just fine using just this. The really cool thing about this blog post, though, is that there's also some code available. And in particular, the code that was used to generate this retrieval mechanism can be found on GitHub. The thinking here is that you can have one card as an input, and then you can use embeddings to figure out which other Magic the Gathering cards are similar. And I'm pretty curious about this. What does similarity even mean when we're talking about Magic the Gathering cards? So as a next step, I figured I would explore the GitHub repository that's attached to this blog post. And from there, I started fiddling around in the notebook. And this is the app that I ended up with. I'll show in a moment how it's exactly made, but the main input here is that I can search for a card if I want. So I could type in uh, Wrath, I think that's a thing in Magic the Gathering. And when I query here, the table below updates. The original table that you saw has all the cards available, but now I'm doing a hard filter on the name of the card. And you can see the term Wrath really appears in all of these card names over here. So uh, let's just select one card, uh, Lazel, Wrathful Warrior. And this is now going to be the query. I could also explore some other cards if I really wanted to, but this quick selection over here is sufficient for what I'm interested in doing. So in this particular case, there is apparently this one card for Lizelle, Wrathful Warrior. It really has been a while since I played this game, and I believe this is a card that references Baldur's Gate, which is a popular video game. But anyway, this card is now going to be the input for the querying system, and we're gonna use the embeddings for this card to see what other cards are similar. And just for good measure, the embedding for this card is actually directly attached onto this data set. This is a data set that you can fetch, and the GitHub repository has all the details. So again, this is the query card that gives me an embedding, and then I'm going to use dot product to figure out which other cards have similar embeddings. And um, here's a few. Apparently, there are variations of Lazel. There's the Primal Warrior variant, there's the Blessed Warrior variant, the Callus Warrior, and the Illithid Thrall. But there's also some other cards. There's this Protector of Gondor and this uh, Darien, King of Keldor. And if I were to guess why these cards are all so similar, it is because there's a little bit of text in the card over here where apparently we are entering the battlefield. If this card enters the Magic the Gathering battlefield, then something happens. And that's a pattern that I see here and here, as well as over here. This also enters the battlefield. But we could also just have a look at another card. This card is called Changeling Hero. And looking at the cards below, it does seem that it's the term changeling uh, that really carries a lot of weight. Uh, changeling definitely appears in all of these cards in the description, so it feels somewhat safe to say that a lot of what we're seeing here is due to text similarity, and in particular the text that's inside of the Magic the Gathering card. So at this point, you might be curious how I made this, so I'm going to share the important bits of this notebook, but you can also find the notebook itself on GitHub. Uh, there's a link in the show notes. The main way this works is I have a Marimo widget over here that gives me a text input. And this text input is something that I can then go ahead and use in another cell reactively. So whenever I would update this value, this slider variable would also update, and that would also cause a change in the cell below. And in this cell, I am using the table widget inside of Marimo. In the cell below, I am taking the giant data frame that has all the embeddings, and I'm filtering based on the text input that I just showed. But the thing that's really useful in this particular case is that I'm wrapping that inside of this Marimo UI table function. The main benefit really that this gives me is that I can still view my data frame just like normal, but I also get this row selector that really allows me to select individual rows that are relevant. And that is going to be useful when I'm constructing a query for embeddings. Another really cool benefit here, by the way, is that I can choose more than one row. So I can also have uh, two cards selected, so to say. And when I do that, you are going to see that there's a, a bit of an update down below over here. But the way that we're going to go forward from here is that this card has a embedding and this card also has a embedding. And I'm just going to add those together and that will give me the query embedding. And then from here, I'm going to be using dot product similarity to figure out which cards are deemed similar. And finally, at the end over here, I have a final cell that's in charge of listing all the cards in a nice little grid. To do that, I am reusing the remo.image function. I can just pass a URL in there, and that's going to generate me the image. 
A thing that's quite convenient here is I'm also able to set the height such that I can define a card that's small enough but big enough to be readable. And in order to get this neat little grid, what I'm doing here is I have this little helper function that is going to vertically stack three cards next to each other and it's going to horizontally stack many of those on top of each other. And that's how I get this nice little grid. So this was a fun exercise, but where might you go from here? Well, I like the fact that I have a little bit of a UI going for myself because that allows me to play around. But one thing I've really noticed is that we are really doing stuff with text embeddings here. And there are other aspects of Magic the Gathering cards, I guess you could say, that really do give me the impression that we could go for something better. Things like the color of the card, so to say, or the amount of mana that's being used, or the kind of card. Is it a creature or an instant? So if we wanted to improve upon this, one thing that would be really cool to do is to maybe come up with some sort of a fine-tuning system where I might be able to take card one and some other card, and then I could come up with some sort of a labeling interface that allows me, the user, to tell the system, hey, that is a match, those two cards are similar, or they're not similar. Something about that fine-tuning I do think could make for more compelling embeddings. But if I ever wanted to go in this direction, gee, it's really great that I'm able to do very quick rapid prototyping. And that's something that I think Marimo is also uh, really, really good for. Now, finally, before wrapping up the video, I do want to give a good shout out to Max Wolf, because not only did he write a really good blog post, but he also has a well-structured GitHub repository attached to it that not only gives me the code that he used, but it also gives me links to the data set that he's used as well, which made it very easy for me to reproduce this. Definitely feel free to check this out if you're interested to play around with it, but also feel free to check the show notes for a link to the Marimo notebook as well.